Adam Taxon, main administrator of the Daily Beck Facebook page here. Uh, I am providing you with a uh, part of a very worthwhile discussion during the beginning of the second hour of Glenn Beck's show this past Friday, May 4th. It deals with uh, Cass Sunstein, uh, who is a pretty chilling name to anyone who knows about him or anyone on our side who knows about him. And uh, for the whole uh, discussion, you should go to glennbeck.com. This is something of a teaser, but there's a lot here. I'm giving you about seven minutes, or actually eight, a little more than eight minutes worth, which is not the complete discussion, but uh, I think uh, it's worth listening to. And uh, go to glennbeck.com for more. Adam Taxon, main administrator of the Daily Beck Facebook page here. Uh, I am providing you with a uh, part of a very worthwhile discussion during the beginning of the second hour of Glenn Beck's show this past Friday, May 4th. It deals with uh, Cass Sunstein, uh, who is a pretty chilling name to anyone who knows about him or anyone on our side who knows about him. And uh, for the whole uh, discussion, you should go to glennbeck.com. This is something of a teaser, but there's a lot here. I'm giving you about seven minutes, or actually eight, a little more than eight minutes worth, which is not the complete discussion, but uh, I think uh, it's worth listening to. And uh, go to glennbeck.com for more. Obama and Cass Sunstein have been close friends, uh, or close confidants for quite some time. Um, he is now, Cass Sunstein is now the head of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. It is important. Everybody says he's our regulation czar. But more importantly, he is also in the Office of Information. Now, what does that mean? The Office of Information and Regulation. We have a guy who absolutely is, is, he has a thrill that runs down his leg every time he thinks of the job that he has. This guy is a an Edward Bernays, uh, a Colonel House. He is, he's all of these nasty guys from the Wilson administration all rolled into one. He is a guy that understands how to nudge, how to influence people. Because, see, this is not just, it's not just the idea that he can write regulation. It's not just that. He's not just writing regulation. He is also nudging people. So it's not just the idea that I'm going to, I'm going to uh, come up with uh, all of these great regulations that will nudge. He also uses information to nudge. While he was back in, in, in Harvard, way back, I mean, you've got to go into the time tunnel. I don't know if you remember, maybe your, maybe your mom and dad or your grandparents would remember all the way back to 2008. When he was at Harvard, just before he went into the Obama administration, he wrote a paper on information quality and how the government needed to have a program and how they would oversee policies regulating to information quality. He wrote a, a paper that said the government should have teams of covert agents and pseudo-independent advocates who could cognitively infiltrate online groups and websites, as well as other activist groups. Any of these groups that would um, advocate views that Sunstein or the government would deem false conspiracy theories about the government. Even if it turns out, and this is in the paper, even if it turns out that those conspiracies in the end were true. It was the government's right and responsibility to build confidence in the government. Now, this is propaganda this is the three minute men from uh woodrow wilson it's goebbels it's all of it rolled up into one now i want you to know that i'm reading this because i just wanted to make sure that i wasn't giving you information that would come from me would come from some conspiracy site come from some 
right wing crazy website. I'm giving you this from salon.com. Sunstein advocates that the government's stealth information should be accompanied by sending covert agents into chat rooms, online social networks, and even real space groups. He also proposes that the government make secret payments to so-called independent, credible voices to bolster the government's messaging on the grounds that those who don't believe government sources would be more inclined to listen to those who appear to be independent while secretly acting on behalf of the government. The program would target those advocating false conspiracy theories, which they define to mean an attempt to explain an event or practice by reference to uh, machinations of powerful people who have also managed to conceal their role. He wrote it in 2008. He was just asked about this in a press conference. Which is silly because yeah. how old were you in 2008? I mean, that uh, is... Ten, were there, I was four years was younger than ten. I am. I was were ten you, years old. I, was I don't ten. think I was born in 2008. You were four uh, were years... There cars back then? You're like three and so. a half years ago. I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember I don't, anything I, don't I did remember. in 2008. I, not one thing. Had the, had the United States been established in 2008? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't so. even think... Yeah, you're, we were here's Cass Sunstein being questioned by a blogger. And again, who can remember what you said? You know? I was wondering, why do you think it's the government's job, or why do you think the government should uh, go after family members who have questions about 9-11, responders who are lied to about the air, survi- survivors whose testimony commits, and also government whistleblowers that were gagged because they released information that contradicts the official story. Why do you think the government should do that? I think, as, as Ricky said, I've written hundreds of articles, and I remember some and not others. Not what I don't remember very well. I, I, I hope I didn't say that. Um, but whatever was said in that article, my role in government is um, to oversee federal rulemaking in a way that is uh, uh, wholly disconnected from the vast majority of my academic writing, including that. So, I know that. I'm just asking because you made oh, Okay. All right. So as he was uh-huh. getting ready to go into the Obama administration, he just jotted some things down. It just... It was almost on the back of a nothing a to do with the way he operates, right? You know, yeah. why would you be mentally preparing for the for the administration? And it, it, because it wasn't jotted down on the back of a napkin, it is a full fledged paper from Harvard, where he's talking about what the government should do through the administration in this office. Yeah, and, and you say a very key word there, and, and it's should. He's not saying that this is something they could possibly do or maybe could do or whatever. He's saying this is what they should do. So, in other words, what he's saying is, look, I'm not going to ban tater tots, but we should. But you know what? I bet if we just move the tater tots to the back. We could get more people to not grab the tater tots. Well, that's a big part of his theory. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's a choice structure. Uh, it's libertarian paternalism is what he calls it. But it's it's it, they like to throw libertarian in there, so it feels like you're making the paternalism. choice. Paternalism. Right, but paternalism. Libertarians don't have mommies and daddies taking care of them for the rest of their life. But then when the three of us start talking about, hey, what happened to the tater tots? I think they moved them. He, he wants a government agent being placed in this room to say... <laughs> no, that's yeah. conspiracy. They haven't moved the tater tots. Yeah. You're, and you're crazy. He wants somebody to pay. What he he wants. wants the government to pay somebody in the press yeah. to come out and say, okay. These guys are, these guys are 